Alright, then welcome back everyone. Let's solve this question. Bantic and subsequences. Now, this is a simple question based on combinatorics. I hope you have read the question once, uh, but I'll still read it once for you. Now, what we have is, this guy Lantic has calculated uh, sum of all the elements of an array. We are given an array and we have calculated the sum of all the elements and we call it S. Okay, so we have an array, we have an array and the sum of all their elements we are representing using S and we call the subsequence of an array nearly full if sum of numbers in that subsequence is equal to S minus 1. So nearly full, so that's what they have given, right? A nearly full subsequence is nearly full subsequence is a subsequence such that sum of all the elements in it is equal to S minus 1. Now what is the subsequence, guys? So I hope you know it, but if you're not, uh, hear me out. So let's say you have an array like this, A1, A2, A3, A4. So subsequence is simply uh, obtained by removing zero or more elements from the array. So subsequence can be obtained by like, let's say I remove A2 and A3. Or if I decide to not remove any element, then even A2, A3, A4 is again a subsequence. Or if I decide to remove A4. So it is different from uh, subarray or subsegment. Subsegment or subarray is a contiguous uh, part of the array, but subsequence is uh, simply obtained by removing one or more, or zero or more elements from the array. They have also defined it, right? So a subsequence is obtained by deletion of several, possibly zero or all elements from the array. Yeah, so you can remove all the elements of the array as well. So that's the difference between subsequence uh, and a subsegment or slash uh, subarray, right? So it's different from a subarray because here you can remove uh, one or more, like zero or more elements from the array. The definition of a nearly full subsequence is sum of all the numbers in that subsequence is equal to S minus 1. So we are after this subsequences. And what we have to print is print the number of nearly full subsequence in the array. And let's see uh, what are the bounds on the array numbers. The array numbers are greater than equal to 0. It basically, they are non-negative. Fine. So we have to print the number of nearly full subsequence of the array. The question is simple. Let me quickly summarize it for you. Uh, this sum S is equal to sum of all the array elements. Okay. Sum of all the array elements where I is I goes from 1 to n. And now you are after subsequences. You are after subsequences whose sum is maybe I can represent subsequences like this. Subsequence. Okay. Now I'm after subsequences such that the summation of this subsequence is equal to s minus one. Fine. So that's what you are after. And I want to count of it. I want to count. I want to count such kind of subsequences so that sum of all that sub sum of all the elements of the subsequence is equal to s minus one. Fine. So we want to find the count of it. Okay, and uh, good thing is uh, the error elements are non-negative, so you don't need to worry about negative numbers. That's very good. Um, it's also, it actually re reduces a lot of complexity. If the error elements are negative, then uh, it would have been a little bit more difficult uh, to think about this question. And so we just have to print the count. Okay, let's see how can we do it. Now you want a subsequence uh, with the sum equals to S minus 1, right? That's what you want. Okay, so let's just say our error elements like this. Uh, maybe 2, 3, 1, 5, 7. So array elements are non-negative, right? So I'm just taking some non-negative elements. Okay, so let's say this is the array. So yeah, that's that. Now, what do you want? You want subsequences with the sum equal to s minus one. What is this? S? s is basically the sum of all their elements. Fine. How can you get it? How can you get it? You want a subsequence with some s minus one. You want a subsequence with some s minus one. So how can you get it? You pick all the elements but one. Right? You pick all the elements but this one. Then the sum of uh, like then this sum of this subsequence will be equal to s minus one, right? Fine. So you pick all the sub you pick all the elements but one. Then the sum of that subsequence will be s minus one, right? See guys, it's very simple. Uh, sum of the entire array, sum of the entire array is s. Now if you want a subsequence that is that is you want to delete some element such that the sum of all the elements becomes s minus one. What is a good candidate that you need to be deleted? That will be one, right? That will be one itself because if you delete that one, sum of the remaining elements will be s minus one. Right, that's a uh, one observation. Removing one, so observation one, I'll write it here. Observation one, removing one will give us, will give a subsequence, will give a subsequence with sum, with sum s minus one. Right, so removing one will give us a subsequence with sum s minus one. Right, so if this is the area, how many subsequences do you get? Can you tell me? See, you can either remove this one. So this will be one subsequence, right? Or you can remove this one and this will be subsequence. If there were, let's say, one more one here, let's say there was one more one here, then you can either remove this one, okay, either remove this one. So this part will be your subsequence or you can remove this one. So this part and this part will be your subsequence, the sum equal to s minus one, or you can remove this one. So this part will be your subsequence with the sum s minus one. Fine. So it seems as if the how many number of ones you have, how many number of ones you have, will be equal to number of nearly full subsequences, right? Fine. So it looks as if the case. So first things first, you have to find out the number of one, right? So you need, that's also, it also, 
an important observation you need count of ones right you need count of ones okay so the number of nearly full subsequences that is the subsequences with uh, some equals to s minus 1 will be equal to will be equal to how many ones you have right will be equal to how many ones you have because you can uh, remove any one of them let's say I remove this one so the remaining subsequence will be some s minus 1 and so on right so this will hold true uh, but just look at the constraints this will hold true if the array elements are positive right if there are no zeros involved then this holds true right but if what if there is a zero involved what if there is a zero involved let's say i have a zero like this let's have a zero here i also had a zero here now i can delete this one and this subsequence will have a sum of s minus one okay after removing this one i have an option to either keep this zero or not i can either keep it or not keep it right so after removing this one i have an option whether i want to keep this zero or not because keeping this zero or not is not changing the sum right see guys what i'm saying is if i remove this one of course the remaining element is going to give me a subsequence with some s minus one right but in that also if i have a zero somewhere i have option i can pick it or not pick it right similarly let's say i have one more zero and i decide to remove this one i know the remaining element the subsequence that i formed will be of some s minus one that will be a nearly full subsequence but what about zeros guys what about zeros you have two options either pick it or not pick it either pick it or not pick it right so what i'm saying is what i'm saying is for every one for every one for every one for every one you have or basically for every one you delete you can delete a zero you can delete a zero or you can't delete a zero right you can't delete a zero Okay, so what I'm saying is, I say it's very similar. It's basic counting. Let's say I had a uh, ones, three and uh, zeros, zeros two. Okay, so for each of these three guys, so let's say I had three ones, right? For each of these three ones, I have two options. I have two options. Either I pick the first zero, either I pick, either I pick the first zero, or I don't pick the first zero. After picking the first zero, I have again two options. Either I pick pick the second zero, or I don't pick the second zero. After not picking the first zero, I have two options. Either pick the second zero or not pick the second zero so what i'm saying is what i'm saying is if let's say a number of ones let's say if number of ones are this and number of zeros are this number of zeros are this what you can do is you can decide to delete so i'm right now to the count right the count would be equal to number of ones number of ones into so i try to decide i try to delete uh, each and every one okay into for each one deleted for each one deleted you have two power zeros number of options Okay, very simple. See, you try to, you deleted one, you deleted a one, right? And for all the zeros that you have, you can either pick it or not pick it. You can pick it or not pick it. You can pick it or not pick it, right? So for each of the one, for each of the one, you have two power number of zeros option, right? For each one that you removed, you have two power number of zeros option. That's what I'm saying, right? So it's a simple uh, counting, right? For each of the one removed, you can decide to either remove a zero or not, remove a zero or not. So basically that will uh, lead to two power zeros combination, right? So the question is done and dusted here. So let me just quickly summarize it for you. We were after subsequences so that sum is equal to s minus one. What is this? Sum of all their elements. We found out that the easiest candidate that we have to delete is one. Easiest candidate that we, that we have to delete is one. So by deleting a one, you'll definitely get a nearly full subsequences. So what you found out is for every one deleted, for every one deleted, you have two options for each of the zeros. So the total answer would be number of ones, number of ones into two power number of zeros. Right? For every one deleted, for zeros, for the zeros that you have in your uh, array, you have two options. Either pick them, either pick them or not pick them, pick them or not pick them. So all in all total option you will have two power zeros. Right. So this will be the count. And yeah, uh, that's that. So let's just quickly see the code. So here's the code. The code is very simple. Uh, I've just taken the input here. This is the array. And uh, I've just counted the ones and zeros, right? I've just counted the ones and zeros that I have because that's all matters here. And uh, if no ones are there, and then anyway, you don't have a subsequence, right? You need a one. If you want to have a nearly full subsequence, you need a one, right? So that's, of course, that's a trivial observation. Uh, if you don't have a one, then a uh, number of nearly subsequence will be zero. You won't be able to remove any element and get a uh, sum equals to S minus one. So that's, yeah, I think I forgot this in the, in the beginning. But yeah, this is an obvious observation that if ones are not there, then you cannot have a nearly full subsequence. Otherwise, the answer would be ones into, what is this? This is one LL, uh, right shift to zero. So this is actually two power zeros, okay? So yeah, this is a quick way to calculate a uh, power of two. Instead of using power function, you should uh, prefer uh, bitwise operators. So whenever you want to calculate uh, some power of two, you want to calculate some power of two, always prefer bitwise operations. So what this does is it shifts, it shifts, uh, it right shifts one by zero number of times. So if you do one right shift two, uh, what it will do is it will multiply one by two power two. 
that's what it's going to do right so i don't know if you know this or not but if you have a number here uh, let's say one if you have a number here one and you write shift by let's say some x number of times what you are effectively doing is uh, you are uh, multiplying it by 2 power x so irrespective of whatever number you have so whenever you do right shift by one you are multiplying the number by two whenever you right shift by two you are multiplying the number by four so on and so forth so if you are mul if you are basically doing a right shift by zero number of times you are actually multiplying it by two power zeros so if you didn't know it you know now so this is a good property of right shift operator so if you do left shift some number of times you're basically dividing it by that number so if you have something like this one uh, maybe some big number let's say six right shift of two so what you are now doing is you're dividing six upon two power two so that's what you're doing so that's simple bit manipulation trick so yeah the question is simple uh, the answer is simply number ones into two power number zeros so, yeah that's that uh, i hope you got something out of this video i'll see you in the next one